Welcome to using the terminal on Windows. I'm Philip with Real Python, and in this video course, I'll give you an introduction to the terminal. The terminal can be intimidating to work with, especially when you're used to working with graphical user interfaces. Even though you can do many of your day-to-day -day tasks on the computer with apps that contain a graphical user interface, you may need to open the terminal at some point when you're learning Python. And yeah, the terminal really is an important tool for you as a Python developer. But granted, at the beginning, it's hard to figure out how to navigate this dark space. To show you how to get started using the terminal, I invited Ian as a guest today. Ian will get a bunch of tests from me that he has to perform in the terminal. He really has to perform all the tests in the terminal, so there will be no mouse, you'll see no windows except the terminal window, but there will be files, there will be folders, and of course, there will be some Python in it as well. And here's what we'll tackle in this course. You'll learn how to open the terminal, how to create files and folders, how to navigate the file system, and then you'll learn how to show contents of files and how to edit, copy, and move them. And of course, you'll learn how to run Python files in the terminal. Depending on the Windows version you're currently on right now, chances are that the terminal is not installed on your system yet. That's why I recorded an extra session with Ian, where he shows you how to install the terminal on Windows. If this is your first encounter with the terminal and you're feeling a bit nervous right now, I promise you that Ian will do a wonderful job of explaining things to you. And even if you're already a seasoned terminal user, I promise that you'll learn a thing or two. But before we begin the conversation, let's get a bit of theory out of the way in the next lesson. This is a lesson to give you an introduction to some terms that are helpful to know when you're talking about the terminal. Of course, I didn't want to miss out the chance of calling these terms terminal terms. Early developers used computer terminals to interact with a central mainframe computer. These were devices with a keyboard and a screen or printer that would display computed output. The personal computers that you're using today contain a different architecture. Still, you can find a terminal application to interact with your computer on a basic level. These terminal applications are called terminal emulators. As the name suggests, they are emulating the computer terminal. However, nowadays when people talk about the terminal, they usually don't talk about the old school computer terminal, but terminal emulators. Same goes for this course. When we're talking about the terminal in this course, we're actually talking about the terminal emulator. There are two other terms that you might hear now and then in combination with the terminal. Command line interface and shell. Command line interfaces allow you to interact with an application or program through the terminal. You execute commands and see their output. A shell is a program that provides an interface with specific commands to you. To bring it all together, the shell provides the commands that you use in a command line interface and the terminal is the application you run to access the shell. And these were the terminal terms. But enough with the theory for now, let's hop into the main part of this course and do some work with the terminal. Here we are on the Windows system and with me is the real Python Windows guy, Ian. <laughs> Hi, Ian. Hi, Philip. Pleasure to be here as the real Python Windows guy. Let's jump right in and start with showing how to find a terminal on Windows. For other operating systems on Mac and Linux, it's there already. And I always thought that Windows also had something like a terminal, but maybe you can show me what's there usually on a Windows system and how to get a terminal on Windows. Yes. A lot of material on the internet is very focused towards Unix-based systems, and it can be hard to find some Windows instructions. So in terms of the terminal, there is a terminal in Windows, though it's not called a terminal. And the classic terminal, back from the days when there was MS-DOS, is the command prompt, which is actually sort of a copy of MS-DOS, so that all the scripts that people wrote in MS-DOS could work in Windows. So if I go to the start menu and just type in command prompt, you'll see the app come up here. And this is what you will be presented with roughly. 
And I have something else installed, so I've got a couple extra lines coming up, but it's this. It's a black screen. You can make that a bit bigger. And yeah, this is a terminal or a command prompt or a command line. The terminology is quite fluid here. Okay, and when you were saying you were making it a bit bigger, you were pressing like Control Plus to increase the font size. Control Plus doesn't seem to work. It's actually Control and I moved the mouse wheel up and down. Okay. But I think if you right click, no, I'm not sure. But anyway, you'll come to see that I don't really recommend this application if you're getting started with this stuff. So, In any font size, it's not ideal. Yes, really because it's old and it's trying to emulate an even older system, but it's just stuck around for so long because so many people use Windows and so many people still have these scripts from years ago that to just delete it from the system would cause havoc. Okay. So the next one you might find or you might have seen is Windows PowerShell, which is also an app which starts up something like this. And it's actually the same program as the Windows command prompt in the sense that it has the same controls, like I press control and the mouse wheel up to resize this, but it's a different shell. So it's a different program in the back, but the actual window itself is the same program. I don't want to get into too much detail about that because that gets quite complicated quite quickly, but this is Windows PowerShell, which is a newer shell to replace the command prompt that Windows came up with. And this is good, and if you want to use this You'll see PowerShell on real Python tutorials, and you can use this. Although even this is a bit old. Show us what's even better than PowerShell. Right. Well, this is Windows PowerShell. What's better than Windows PowerShell is PowerShell Core. And I can actually start PowerShell Core from here, but there's an even better program called Terminal, Windows Terminal. So. There's a couple things that happened here. I've started PowerShell Core in a new program called the Terminal, the Windows Terminal. And if you're on Windows 10, you won't have this Terminal program. What you can do is you go, go to the Microsoft Store. It's very easy to install. And then you can search for Terminal. And then you'll be able to see Windows Terminal. There's a couple other ones like the Windows Terminal Preview, Fluent Terminal, but this is the standard one. I've already got it installed, but you can press the Install button to install that. And then you should get this new program called Terminal. And the nice thing about this terminal is that you can actually start Windows PowerShell, Command Prompt, and even other shells in it. So it has a lot of flexibility and you can have different shells and different tabs. It's really handy and has all these modern terminal features that you'll find in Linux and Mac. So on Windows 10, you go to the Microsoft Store and although it's in the store, you can get it for free. It's provided by the Microsoft Corporation. So it's something that has a, has a reputation. And on Windows 11, that's an operating system that you are on right now. I'm on Windows 10. Ah, okay, gotcha. But on Windows 11, the terminal program comes installed by default. So you won't need to do this. I'll also just mention that I'm on PowerShell Core here. You'll see PowerShell 7.3.0. Now, this is the very latest version because I explicitly installed this. You may not have PowerShell Core. You may have Windows PowerShell. That's fine. As long as you're on the terminal program, which is what I recommend, you'll be sort of in the latest environment. You won't need any of the extra PowerShell core things. And if you don't want to install anything, you can still get by with Windows PowerShell. But if you're on the command prompt, then you're going to run into some very significant differences between what we show you and what you can do. Okay, and for this course, we will work with the Windows terminal. So if you want to follow along tightly, then we recommend you get the Windows terminal to your Windows system. Yes. In a former lesson, we were showing that there were different terminals on Windows, but we will work with the Windows terminal. If you as a viewer want to follow along, you can check back on, on a former lesson about this. We will use the Windows terminal and you will see how to 
install it if you haven't installed it. And now, Ian, I want you to show me how to open it on the Windows system. Okay. Usually when I'm opening a program from Windows, I just press the Windows key, which will open up this menu automatically. But you can just click on the Start menu. And then you can start typing Terminal. And if you do have it installed, you should see Windows Terminal app here with the icon, as you can see on the screen. And then you should get a window, something like this. And you should see PowerShell loading up by default. If you're not getting PowerShell, there is a small drop-down menu here next to the plus button. And you'll have all the shells that are available on your system. Choose one that says PowerShell. OK, just to emphasize this one, so there is also a Windows PowerShell, but we are working with the PowerShell here. Yes, also known as PowerShell Core. but. Both will work equally well for what we're going to do here. Now with the Windows Terminal open, where are we on your system right now? Good question. So we're in a folder. Now when I say in, I just mean that that is our current working directory. We're not physically inside a folder or anything. But the path which is set as the current working directory is the C drive. Real Python is the directory, and I'm in that directory right now. Okay, and is there a command to quickly see where we are? Right. Usually on Windows, you don't need to because the prompt by default will show you where the path is. But there is a print working directory command, which will show you the current path that you're at. It's just a way to locate yourself and different paths for files because you're usually working with files, right? And if you want to operate on a certain file, you need to know where that is relative to where you are. And so that's why you are in a folder. Like when you open Windows Explorer and you see the contents of a folder, the folder that you see the contents of is your current working directory. The next task I want you to perform is to create a new directory named pb underscore terminal. OK. Similar to on Linux systems, you can use the mkdir or make dir command. And was it pb underscore terminal? Terminal, yeah. OK, and then you get some nice output here that shows you what's happened, and it's created a directory. When you want to move into the directory on the Windows Explorer, you would double click it. Obviously, you can't double click here. How do you Correct. move into this new created folder? So again, much like the Linux commands, you can use cd. and the name of the folder to go into. So in this case, it's PB terminal. And I can just press Enter. And you'll see that my prompt has changed, which indicates that I'm in a different current working directory. And if I PWD, which is, stands for print working directory, you'll see that it's, it's now different. Currently, this directory is empty because you just created it. So let's create a file in it. OK. And since we are on a real Python course, let's create a, a Python file yeah. and call it hello underscore terminal.py. OK. Now, this is where a command is slightly different from the Linux versions, but you can use ni, which stands for new item. And I will mention, just as a side note, that all of these commands I've used so far are actually aliases or nicknames for different commands. The full command is new item. But you can abbreviate that to ni for new item. And then it was hello terminal.py. Exactly. There we go. Yeah. This will just create a file. And now, when you want to show that this pb terminal folder is not empty, how would you go with this? Well, I would usually list the contents of the folder, and I can do that with the ls command. Mm hmm which will show me everything that's in this directory. At the moment, there's just one item. And it looks very similar to the previous command because it's showing me what it created, and now it's showing me what's in the folder. And since it's the same thing, the commands are almost, the outputs are almost identical. But if, if I had more files in here, they would be listed underneath this line or before, depending on the alphabetical order.